magic word Here in my secret kindergarten The world's best show for kids is starting The secret kindergarten radio show Use your ears and your imagination We're going to play, we're having fun from The Secret Kindergarten. And that's right. It's nature time! <laughs> Today, we are going to talk about the bottlenose dolphin. All right. Here we go. Let's talk about the bottlenose dolphin. Thought to be some of the smartest animals on earth, bottlenose dolphins send messages to one another in many different ways. Bottlenose dolphins squeak, squawk and use body language. Leaping as high as 20 feet in the air snapping their jaws, slapping their tails on the surface of the water, blowing bubbles, and even butting heads. Each dolphin has a special whistle that it creates soon after it is born. This whistle is used for identification, just like a human's name. Dolphins also produce high frequency clicks, which act as a sonar system called echolocation. When the clicking sounds hit an object in the water, like a fish or a rock, they bounce off and come back to the dolphin as echoes. Echolocation tells the dolphins the shape, size, speed, distance, and location of the object. Bottlenose dolphins have a sharp sense of hearing. Scientists believe that the sounds travel through the dolphin's lower jaw to its inner ear and then are transmitted to the brain. For analysis, dolphins grow to be anywhere from 6 to 12 feet long. They shed their outermost layer of skin every two hours. Whoa! Very social and playful mammals, bottlenose dolphins form friendships that last decades, hunting, mating, and protecting each other. They like to surf in the waves and wakes of boats and swim through self-made bubble rings. They can swim up to 22 miles an hour. That's pretty fast, everybody. These sea mammals feed on fish, squid, and shrimp. A group of dolphins will cooperate to make a mud ring to trap fish. Then, some of the dolphins in the group will wait outside the ring for the fish that try to escape, gulping them up as a snack. Bottlenose dolphins are found in warm water all over the world. And there are lots of them here in New Zealand. They live both in shallow water, close to shore, and far out in deep, dark water. Dolphins face a lot of problems with getting trapped in the garbage humans leave on the beach. The dolphin is here for us in spirit to teach us to listen to listen to nature, to listen to what people are really saying to us, to listen to ourselves and to decide if we are choosing the right thing to do or the wrong thing to do. 
Now, I have a, a little activity. We're going to try some dolphin breathing to see how it makes us feel. Now, I especially like this because <laughs> I actually learned this from you kids out there. <laughs> and some of you know how to really <laughs> annoy your mum and dad with this. And so I looked into it and I discovered it's an actual thing called dolphin breathing. All right. So this is what we're going to do. Like how a dolphin breathes. When a dolphin comes up for air, what do they do? They go like this. When they come up from the water, or maybe it's more like a or a can you do that? How a dolphin pushes air out of their spout when they come up for air. Ready? Big deep breath in and a out. Big deep breath in and out. How does that feel? It feels pretty good. I feel like I'm not as frustrated. Or maybe any tension that I had, I kind of released it. And guess what? I think you kids, a lot of you kids, do that naturally, innately. And it's usually when mummy and daddy are trying to make you do something or behave a certain way that you don't want to, and you release that energy. <laughs> And it makes mummy and daddy so frustrated. <laughs> it goes right back to them. And that's a good activity for everybody. Grown-ups should try that too. Let's play a... Oh, no. Let's listen to... Let's listen to some dolphins. Here. Have you ever heard a dolphin before? Well, that's what they sound like. <laughs> kind of sounds like a baby from outer space. <laughs> Let's play some music by Nancy Stewart. This one is called Fishies, but guess what? A dolphin's techni technically not a fish as we understand now. Nevertheless, let's hear some music. Fishes in the deep blue sea. What color fishy do you see? Can you find the blue fish? Blue, blue, this one's blue. This little fishy is blue. There are so many fishes in the deep blue sea. What color fishy do you see? Can you find the red fish? Red, red. This one's red, this little fishy is red. There are so many fishes in the deep blue sea. What color fishy do you see? Now can you find the green fish? Green, green, this one's green. This little fishy is green. There are so many fishes in the deep blue sea. What color fishy do you see? How about the yellow fish? Yellow, yellow, this one's yellow. This little fishy is yellow. There are so many fishes in the deep blue sea. What color fishy do you see? And now can you find the purple fish? Purple, purple, this one's purple. This little fishy is purple. There are so many fishes in the deep blue sea. Can you count the fish? 
fishies with me. One, two, three, four, five. There are so many fishes in the deep blue sea. What color is the biggest fishy you see? Well, the biggest one is the blue fish, and blue has a very big voice. Glug, 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 glug. There are so many fishes in the deep blue sea. What color is the smallest fishy you see? Well, the smallest fish is the red fish, and red has a little tiny voice. Glug, 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 glug. There are so many fishes in the deep blue sea. What color is the longest fish you see? Well, the longest fish is the green fish, and green has a very long voice. Glug, glug. Glug, glug, glug. There are so many fishes in the deep blue sea. What color fishies do you see? Well, there's a yellow fish and a purple fish, and they go glug, 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 glug.
I want to read you another story. This is a very old Jewish story called The Honest Disciple. Once a rabbi decided to test the honesty of his disciples. So he called them together and posed a question. What would you do if you were walking along and found a purse full of money lying in the road? He asked. I'd return it to its owner, said one disciple. Hmm, his answer comes so quickly. I must wonder if he really means it, the rabbi thought. I'd keep the money if nobody saw me find it, said another. He has a frank tongue, but a wicked heart, the rabbi told himself. Well, rabbi, said a third disciple, to be honest, I believe I'd be tempted to keep it. So I would pray to God that he gave me the strength to resist such temptation and do the right thing. Aha, thought the rabbi. Here is the man I would trust. With that being said, let's play another little tune. Fly, little bird, across the mountains, fly out over the sea. Come home, little bird, you must be tired, and I have food for thee. Fly, little bird, across the mountains. I love going on ferry rides. Very, very short ferry rides. <laughs> We've got time for a little story about doing the right thing or doing the wrong thing. And this one is from 
Chataka Tales. It's called The Elephant Girly Face. Here we go. Chataka Tales by Ellen C. Babbitt. The Elephant Girly Face. Once upon a time, a king had an elephant named Girly Face. The elephant was called Girly Face because he was so gentle and good and looked so kind. Girly Face never hurts anybody, the keeper of the elephant often said. Now, one night, some robbers came into the courtyard and sat on the ground just outside the stall where Girly Face slept. The talk of the robbers awoke Girly Face. This is the way to break into a house, they said. Once inside the house, kill anyone who wakens. A robber must not be afraid to kill. A robber must be cruel and have no pity. He must never be good, even for a moment. Girly Face said to himself, Those men are teaching me how I should act. I will be cruel. I will show no pity. I will not be good, not even for a moment. So the next morning, when the keeper came to feed Curly Face, he picked him up in his trunk and threw the poor keeper to the ground, killing him. Another keeper ran to see what the trouble was, and Curly Face killed him too. For days and days, Curly Face was so ugly that no one dared go near. The food was left for him, but no man would go near him. By and by, the king heard of this and sent one of his wise men to find out what ailed Curly Face. The wise man had known Girly Face a long time. He looked the elephant over carefully and could find nothing that seemed to be the matter. He thought at last, Girly Face must have heard some bad men talking. Have there been any bad men talking about here? asked the wise man. Yes, one of the keepers said. A band of robbers were caught here a few weeks ago. They had met in the yard to talk over their plans. They were talking together near the store where Girly Face sleeps. So the wise man went back to the king. Said he, I think Girly Face has been listening to bad talk. If you will send some good men to talk where Girly Face can hear them, I think you will be a good elephant once more. So that night the king sent a company of the best men to be found to sit and talk near the stall where Girly Face lived. They said to one another, It is wrong to hurt anyone. It is wrong to kill. Everyone should be gentle and good. Now those men are teaching me, thought Girly Face. I must be gentle and good. I must hurt no one. I must not kill anyone. And from that time on, Girly Face was tame and as good as ever an elephant could be. We're coming up. To the top of the hour, the end of another show. I'm your host, Gino, as in G. No! And thanks for tuning in to The Secret Kindergarten on revolution.radio. You always have a choice to do the right thing or do the wrong thing. And you'll figure it out as you go. So just remember, I love you and we'll see you at the next one.